Let's see what they've got. Oh yeah, look at that. You got your brown gills, dark brown gills. This will be definitely be a, a delicious agaric. Then we've got this one right over here. So this one's probably going to have the, the brown gills as well. If I had my knife, I'd cut it off to avoid the dirt getting into it. See that? Beautiful brown gills. Hey, it's Blaine Washburn with Utah Mushroom Hunter, and uh, I, I was driving home from an appointment, and I noticed an agaric on the side of the road, so I thought I'd stop and uh, show you it and do a quick tutorial on agarics. So here's what I found. All right, so this is where it's at. Straight along this road here, you got this sidewalk here. Got the shrub along over here. And see, all this soil has been disturbed. Agarics like disturbed soil. And this is it right here. I don't have my knife with me. And this isn't a, like a super extra nice one, but it is an agaric. So um, the way I, you could tell, you could, I could tell by the top and the look already that it's gonna be an agaric. But if I pull this thing up, see those brown gills? That's the dead giveaway. The brown gills that look like that. Now these, when these are younger, that starts off pink. But as the mushroom gets a, a little bit older, it turns to brown. And so if I take this and I do a spore print on it, I will get a brown spore print. Now, there are a couple mushrooms that look like this you gotta be super careful of. There are some Amanitas that look a lot like this that are deadly poison, the ones that you don't wanna mess with. And, but they've got white gills. They'll have a, a white top as well. It, you'll, when you get to know them, you'll see, you'll know that they look very different from this. But they'll have a white top uh, with uh, white gills, and I believe I'll have to double check that. But I think that the uh, they're typically a white spore print, and um, and then there's another one too. It's uh, uh, I can't remember exactly what's called. Uh, it's the chlorophyllum molabites, I believe it is. That that looks a lot like this. But the gills look a little bit greener, and if you do a spore print on it, uh, you'll get green, green spores, and you don't want to eat that one. But, uh, but these ones that have the brown or the pink gills and have the brown spore print with the white cap, uh, there's a, a, a number of agarics that this one could be. And this one could be a, um, an agaricus campestri. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards that. It could also be an Agaricus bitorcus. The bitorcus seem to to punch out of the ground and be a little bit closer. Often we'll have dirt on top of it. So I'm leaning maybe more towards a, an Agaricus campestri, but both of them are choice edibles. This one I'll take home and I'll have it for dinner. Um, anyway, there's you a, a quick uh, lesson tutorial on agarics. Now one, one other thing I, I could teach you too is when you get this you can just kind of scrape the top like this and look for any yellowing. If you get a strong yellow then that is probably one you don't want to eat because there are some agarics out there that uh, have um, uh, well, they, they turn yellow and, and they will cause some pretty serious di digestional <laughs> discomfort. And uh, But if it, even if it shows a little bit of yellow, you can smell it. And if it smells real mushroomy, then you're probably okay to eat it. But if, you, if it smells chemically at all, like a, off from a, what do you, you know, an organic smelling mushroom, you don't want to eat it. But um, so, the, so look for that yellow staining just to be careful. And you can see this one doesn't have it. So this one is definitely a choice edible. Now the other generation, when you find a mushroom in a lawn, at a park, a cemetery, or you know, just in a place like this, um, the other factor is th these type of mushrooms will soak up pesticides. So if you have any concern about, the, about it being covered with pesticides, I definitely would not eat it. Now I do have a really good indicator here. I've got this this uh, dandelion right next to it that looks like it's super healthy and happy. So this one probably has not been sprayed by pesticide. 
I'm pro probably okay with this one. So that's another consideration when you're harvesting a, an agaric out of a lawn or park or some other place. But remember, you find these typically where soil has been disturbed. All right, well, anyway, hope this is helpful to you and good luck finding agarics. This is a great time of year to find agarics. You'll find them up in the mountains too. You'll find them down in the valley floors. I just, they just need good moisture. If there's been enough moisture, you'll find them. Okay, so here is, here are two more agarics that I found right here. So, and I, I am just in a park right here. And this is just in their flower bed. And that's a place where you can find agarics. And notice here, you got one there that's dried up. Got two old ones right here, and look at that. There's a nice fresh one right here. But anyway, let's see if we can uh, identify these. Let's start off with this one right here. Boy, you know what? I, I don't have my knife with me. And I didn't bring my stand with me either, but that looks like it's going to be a delicious agaric. I'm guessing that when I open that up, there'll be nice pink gills in this. All right. Now, these are most likely all very similar agarics here. So uh, let me look and see. I mean, usually when they pop up in a location like this, they're all the same type of mushroom. But let me look at these ones and see if they, these ones probably have brown gills. Let's see what they've got. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You got your brown gills, dark brown gills. This will be definitely be a, a delicious agaric. Question is, is if it's going to be filled with worms or not, because it's pretty mature. But anyway, it looks amazing. This one here is going to be. Uh, it's not going to be filled with worms. That one's going to be delicious. Then we've got this one right over here. So this one's probably going to have the, the brown gills as well. If I had my knife, I'd cut it off to avoid the dirt getting into it. See that? Beautiful brown gills. You got the, uh, the uh, under part uh, that's turned into the veil around the stem. You can see some pulling off of the edge. That is the remnants of, uh, of this underlying part right there as it expands and grows out. That pulls away. But these are going to be delicious agarics. I can do the scratch test on it. See, I can go ahead and just scratch that. You can see there's no yellowing. That's going to be delicious. It's going to be a yummy agaric. Too bad I missed out on all these other ones here that have already gone bad. But still, ended up with three right here. So that's four if you count the one that I left in the car. Not bad at all. Beautiful agarics. All right, so I'm cleaning these up just a little bit. I've, I've cut the ends off of these. And again, you can see that uh, that top and how it's white. A little bit of a little bit of brown to it, uh, of course, but uh, but those dark brown uh, gills is the giveaway. Now look at this. I've cut the bottom off, and you can see that there's been a lot of worm in this. So this one, I'm about to cut it in half. I I don't have my uh, stand with me, so I can't uh, cut it while you're watching. I don't have a way to hold my phone up, but. Um, uh, but I'm going to cut this in half to see how many worms are there. And I will do a a, uh, a um, spore print on these too. Even though I know they're going to turn brown, but I want to show you how I do it. And uh, so that you can uh, see what I'm looking for. And you'll see the brown spore print as well. This one is the same. Cut it off and you can see there's a lot of worms in there. So this one might be too far as well. But this young one can see that there's no worms in that one. This one's going to be choice. And this one I expect to be pink inside when I cut it in half. Okay, so I'll come back in just a minute after I get these cut in half. Okay, so here they are cut in half. And look at that. There's definitely some worms in there. Um, I mean, if uh, they the worms won't hurt you. So if you're brave, you can still eat this mushroom. I'd throw the stem away because the stem is really bad. But that cap 
it's there's still a lot of good mushroom there and so you probably could get away with eating that still but you're going to eat a few worms which will die when you cook them and they the worms definitely will not hurt you so that's kind of up to you uh, but um, if you can find them a little younger you'll avoid all those worms Let's see what that looks like this one will look the same I'm not going to cut it in half right now but it'll be the same I'll, I'll use this one for the spore print but, but this young one look at that you can see that the gills are they have that tinge of pink to them and uh, even though they, they they hadn't technically come out yet um, there's already a little bit of brown coming to them but you can see the difference though between those and those and the mature ones that are brown brown and quite often I'll even see them pinker than that but you can see there's no mush uh, no worms in this one it's going to be a super yummy one okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and prep these so we can get a spore print and I've got my assistant here my son Mason <laughs> He is actually the one who's in the profile picture picture for the channel. And he is one of my mushroom buddies. When I'm not on too crazy of hikes, he's with me and he's finding mushrooms. Just to show you how easy this is, I'm going to have my son do the spore print, okay? What he's going to do is he's going to prep these mushrooms. He's going to cut the stems off so he can turn them over and uh, so we can get a spore print. So Mason, you want to go ahead and take the knife and go ahead and do this one first, okay? Okay, let's do this. Don't cut your fingers upside down. Turn it, got to flip it over like this. Okay. Okay, that's the sharp, that's the sharp edge right there. And don't cut your fingers. Okay, go ahead and cut that off. Like that? Perfect, yep. Go ahead and put the stem down and then flip that over. Perfect. Okay, now do that with that one. Remember, don't cut your fingers. Okay, you're, that's all right. That's good. Now flip that over. Good job. Okay. Now flip those over and make that into a mushroom. Perfect. Okay. So now what he's done is is he has the spore prints. You can you can you can okay. put it right you can put it right up there if you like. Okay. So what he's done is he's flipped it over now, and you want the the uh, the gill side down so they can drop spores. Okay, go ahead and do this last one right here. We'll put it right here, okay? This one? Yep, careful not to cut yourself. Be so careful. You're doing good. Good job. Okay, good job. Now flip that one over. Put it right there. Perfect. These gills feel nice. Yeah, they do. They feel really good. Okay, they're flipped over. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to let these set overnight. And uh, these ones here, they still got the bottom there, so they it's, you really can't cut the stem off and do it the same way. But I, I, I had it cut in half, and I'll just leave it there. I, I know what, what these spores are going to be like anyway. But uh, all these, uh, we'll check them in the morning just to make sure everything is a brown spore print like we're expecting. Thank you so much, Mason. You were such a good helper. Was that hard? No, not at all, actually. Okay. The only hard part was, like, not to try to cut yourself. But still, it's not that hard to not cut yourself. <laughs> That's right. got to just be careful, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but getting a, a spore print is this easy. No matter what kind of mushroom you're doing, is all you got to do is you got to uh, cut that stem off and, and, and uh, put it with the uh, gills or spores down or, or um, pores down. And, uh, and then just let it sit overnight, and in the morning we'll check and see what these, these spore prints look like. Notice I'm putting it on white paper. Now, if you're expecting a white spore print, you're going to want to put it on black paper. But these ones here, I am expecting a, a brown spore print. And if they're a, a, somehow a green spore print, we will not eat them. But if they're a brown spore print, then these will be edible. I've already checked all these for yellow staining, and we've got no yellow staining. I'm not worried about that at all. These are... are are all edible mushrooms, uh, less the worms. <laughs> I'm probably not going to eat these two big ones because they're they're pretty wormy, but they're not horrible, horrible. Um, but I'll definitely eat those two right there, right there. Okay, we'll check them in the morning. Okay, so it is the next morning. Good morning, Mason. We're going to check our spore prints. So why don't you go ahead and start on this one back here, okay? Why don't you pull that up? Let's see what we have. 
there you go there's our spore print and it is indeed brown is that good mm -hmm. that's good that's what we were hoping for okay go ahead and do this one see that one's got all the brown spore print as well so well, nice uh, mushrooms. you can put it right up there that. yep that works okay now do this one Okay, not as much came out of that, but but still the spores that came out are brown. Let's go ahead and see if we got anything out of these. Little brown. All right. Yep, there's a little bit that came out of there, and it is brown as well. Okay. So that just verifies that these are indeed agaricus uh, mushrooms. And these are edibles. If they again, if these were green, we would not eat them. And if they are white, we'd leave them alone as well. But the brown spore print is what we're looking for. These are edible agarics. Thank you for watching today's episode of Utah Mushroom Hunter. And you may have recognized this park that I was at today. Um, and if you look there, there's a, a good chance you might find some. But there, this time of year especially, you can go to any park, any place where there's a lot of trees and grass and flower beds and so forth. And, and the chances of you finding them in, in those type of areas right now are pretty good. You just watch the weather patterns, look for rain. We had a really good rainstorm here a few days ago. Uh, a lot of hail and other things going on and and um, and, uh, and the other thing to take in, con into consideration a lot of these flower beds and even trees in these parks and so forth they have sprinklers that are on them so uh, even if it's too dry down in the valley sometimes they'll pop in those areas that they that get hit by the sprinkler system so um, anyway thank you so much for watching and uh, look forward to another episode of Utah Mushroom Hunter thank you so much for watching Thank you.